Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Advancing Image Security and Compliance Through Container Image Encryption. I'm Julius Rosenthal. I'll be moderating today's webinar. We'd like to welcome our presenter today, Brandon Lum, Senior Software Engineer at IBM. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can by the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that later today we'll have the webinar recording up on the CNCF uh, webinar page. With that, I'll hand it over to Brandon. Thank you, Judas. Uh, hi again, I'm Brandon um, and I'm from IBM Research and um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about container image encryption. Um, but before then, just to give you a kind of quick overview, uh, I've been working in container security um, more specifically, a lot of my work has been in container image security. And so we're going to go through, you know, how the motivation for this project came about to be. And then we're going to dive right into the details of it. So um, just an overview, we're going to go through uh, what is container image security, what exactly is the problem that we're looking at today. Um, we're going to define OCI container image encryption uh, that we've been working on. And then we're going to do an end-to-end -end demo from building and then running it on the Kubernetes cluster. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about some advanced uses of um, container image encryption, uh, such as geofencing execution. So let's get started. So uh, naturally, because we're talking about container images, let's talk about you know what the flow or the container image ecosystem looks like. Um, so we have the build, the distribute, and the run. So if we go all the way to the left hand side, where the, we have the build, um, this is where we are building our container images. So this can be on a developer's laptop, or it could be in a DevOps or CI/CD pipeline, such as Jenkins, Travis, or Tekton. But essentially what comes out of this um, built part of the ecosystem is a container image. And so the natural next step of this is we need to be able to make the container image available um, for use. And we do that by distributing it to registry. So this could be um, uploading the image to Docker Hub, for example. And um, you know, because we want an image to be highly available and have quick download times, we may want to distribute it to different regions and different registries around the world. And finally, once the image is made available, um, they all want to be run eventually. So this is where the runtime comes in, where, you know, this could be Docker, this could be Podman, or, you know, it could be Kubernetes runtime, such as container D and CRI so, and Cryo. And the idea is that um, these are the components and the part of the ecosystem that downloads and runs the container images. Um, so the question that we are, we're going to look at today is around the distribution part of the container images. How do we ensure uh, the security of our images while in distribution? And more specifically, the question that we're going to ask is if a registry is compromised or untrusted, what can we do to ensure that our workloads are not compromised as well? So an example of this I'd like to go back to is uh, the Docker Hub registry breach a while back. And in this case, uh, information about users and the Docker Hub registry were exposed. Um, so this means that, you know, um, the integrity or the confidentiality of images would be compromised. Um, so the idea that we want to uh, achieve in container image security is to be able to ensure that even though a registry is compromised, we want to be able to get certain assurances of our container images. 
Um, and second of all, another view of this is the compliance perspective, where in the case where we're using a third party registry or a registry that we do not necessarily have um, great control and governance over, how do we still achieve compliance requirements in those situations? <clears throat> so the specific properties we're going to be looking at today, um, you know, will be integrity and confidentiality. And um, if you've been following what's been happening in image security, you may be familiar with the technology of container image signing. And so container image signing is something that uh, my group worked on for a while. Uh, there are two technologies available in um, this area, uh, mainly is Docker Content Trust and Red Hat Simple Signing. And these uh, projects, um, they give the ability for a developer to sign the images when they're building it and for them to verify it during the runtime. And so what this ensures is that even if the registry is compromised, if there is tampering of the images is able to be detected before the container workload is being run on your cluster. So projects related to this are Notary and Notary v2, uh, Portieros, which is an ambition webhook um, for image verification, and Red Hat Simple Signing, which is part of um, Builder, uh, Cryo, Podman, and all the container tools. So the idea here is that um, image signing protects the integrity of the image. We ensure that tampering cannot be done. However, um, the confidentiality of the image is still at risk. And the example of this is, for example, if I have a container image that contains a highly classified trading algorithm, for example, uh, which is a trade secret, I don't want anyone that's compromised the registry to be able to look at um, the algorithm that I'm running. And this is the problem that we are looking at. How do we protect um, the contents of container images in the case of a registry breach. And so this is where um, container Im image encryption comes in. So um, the idea of this is during the build stage, we add an encrypt step before we push the image. And during the run, um, after we pull the image, we decrypt it before running. And the idea is between the build and run, um, the contain, container image remains encrypted in the registry in transit, and therefore no one should be able to um, violate the integrity or the confidentiality of a container image. So what are the benefits of uh, container image? So, so we talked a, a bit about it already. So we have image confidentiality. Uh, we, no one would be able to look at the contents of a container image, even if, for example, we don't trust the provider of the registry. Uh, and that's, that's what, what it allows us to do is to deprivilege the registry with both image signing and encryption. Uh, the registry becomes untrusted and we can put our images there without any risk of the integrity or confidentiality being violated. Uh, another um, aspect of this is being able to do execution boundary control or geofencing execution. And the idea here is um, an administrator should be able to make the statement that says that uh, if my code is running, I know it's in a particular cluster. So an example in the compliance perspective is that uh, I have a, for example, a uh, image, and I know that it can only be run in a EU cluster. So we'll talk a bit about that uh, towards the end, and this is really taking encrypted container images as well as some key management um, techniques to achieve this. All right, so before we get into um, how we can encrypt a container and share it, uh, let's go through some um, crypto concepts that we would require for this. So we're gonna look at asymmetric encryption and the idea around asymmetric encryption is you have a public private key pair and the public uh, key is something that's publicly accessible, it's not sensitive and the private key is kept secret 
to the creator of the key pair. And the idea here is that you can generate a message that you want to encrypt, like a secret message. You can encrypt it with a public key to get a ciphertext. And the ciphertext can only be decrypted with the private key of this key pair. And um, if, you, if, you, if you use something like SSH, you will most probably be familiar with this. Uh, whenever you generate a key pair, uh, and you want the SSH to a public machine, um, you're taking the public key and you're putting it in the SSH directory of the machine you want the SSH into. Um, so the idea of this is that um, asymmetric encryption makes key sharing a bit easier because uh, the public key that we are sharing for encryption to be done uh, is not sensitive and we can use public channels to convey this, this key. So let's look at an example of um, encrypting an image to someone. So let's say we want Bob wants to send an encrypted image to Addis, right? So it's, the flow is going to look like um, how we would send an encrypted email. Uh, the idea is first Alice creates a RSCA private public key pair, uh, and she using the open SSL commands. And then she takes the public key and transfers it to Bob. So this public key is uh, not sensitive. It can be read by anyone. And Bob then takes the image that he's created and encrypts it with Addis's public key to say that now I'm going to encrypt an image for Addis. And Bob can then upload this encrypted image to the registry, for example, Docker Hub. And finally, Addis can then pull the encrypted image and only because she has the private key of this key pair, she can then decrypt and run the image. All right, so let's go through a quick demo on what this looks like. So I have a terminal here with a work directory and we're gonna simulate uh, what the, the flow we just went through, right? So Bob wants to send an encrypted image to Addis. Um, so the first thing that Addis needs to do is generate several keys. So this is Addis's directory here. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna use the OpenSSL command to generate a private key for Addis. So now we have Addis's private key. And then we are gonna use a command to generate the public key for this key pair. All right. So in this directory now, um, the edits has, we can see that she has a private public key pair. We have a private key and a public key. Now, because edits wants to um, let Bob encrypt an image for her, she would then want to make this available to Bob. So in this case, because we're going to be on the same machine, we're just going to copy it to a directory that Bob has access to. Right. So now as Bob, um, what we want to do is we want to create an image for Alice. Right, so um, we, have, we have an app over here. So this is a very, really simple app. Um, really what it's doing is it's taking Nginx and it's copying a secret file into the file system. And this is you know, something that we would imagine is confidential code, right? It could be um, a sensitive algorithm, trade secrets of the company and so on. So for this, let's say super secret password for CNCF webinar. So what we're gonna do now is um, Bob's gonna build this image. Um, so the tool that we're using today to build the image is using Builder. Um, so Builder is kind of a similar um, tool to Canical or Docker CLI in which it can be used to build images. So Builder but is equivalent to um, Docker build. Cool, and we see that the image is now created. 
Um, and the next thing Bob is now going to do is Bob wants to encrypt the image and send it to Alice. So Bob is going to encrypt the image and upload it to the registry. So we can do this with the command build a push. And we have the name of the image here. And over what we're going to do is we're going to add a flag called encryption key. And then we're going to specify it as Alice's private key. So note here, um, when we're specifying the encryption key, we have a additional prefix called JWE. Um, this is really looking at the internals of the encryption implementation. What it's saying is that we're going to use the, the JSON web encryption protocol to encrypt um, the key necessary to decrypt the image. And then we're going to say use credentials because I am now pushing this to Docker Hub. I'm going to use my credentials for Docker Hub. Oops, I that is not the name of the private key. Oh, public key, sorry. My bad. Because we're encrypting, we're using the public key. Cool. Now, so we've just um, uploaded an encrypted image. We said, please encrypt this. Use the Edison's public key to encrypt it. And we are uploading to Docker Hub. So if we go to dockerhub.com, we should be able to see this image available there. So now that we have uh, this image that Bob has uploaded to the Docker Hub registry, we're going to um, show how Addis can download the image and use it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove all the images locally to, um, to kind of simulate Addis doing this on a different machine. So now we are going to use, um, so Addis can say build a pool um, and she can specify the decryption keys. So she's going to say build a pool to pull the image. Here's the private key that is required to decrypt the image. And this is the name of the image in Docker Hub. So she should be able to do this. It's downloading and getting the image. And then she can run it here. So we can do a popman run. And we can see um, the secret file that we've created. So now we, we've kind of seen like the end-to-end -end how Bob has encrypted and Alice has decrypted it. So let's imagine if now I'm an adversary Eve, right? Um, somehow I've been able to get my hands on this image. I should not be able to see the contents of it, right? So I'm going to remove the images again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a pull, but in this case, I'm not going to specify the decryption key here. So if this is someone that tries to pull the image, but does not have um, the private key to decrypt the image, what we'll see is that it's trying to download the image. And it returns an error message here that says missing private keys needed for decryption. So what this means is that the image stays encrypted. And so you know, the contents of the, the image is secure from adversaries. All right. So coming back, let's kind of take a, a deeper dive into what exactly is happening here. How is Anchored the Container Images implemented? And for this, we go to the OCI spec, which is um, the Open Container Initiative, and we're looking at the image spec more specifically. So the idea is we have an image spec, and what an image spec looks like in OCI is, is a JSON um, document. And the JSON document contains uh, a bit of metadata on the configuration of the image. 
as well as uh, a field called layers. And in the layer field, it lists uh, the various content pieces of the image. You know, what are the files that make up the image? And so what layers are, are really they're just collection of files that have been tied to zip. And what, um, when a runtime downloads the image, it takes these um, tile props and it untiles them and puts them together to form the container image. So what we are doing in this case is unlike image signing where we can just sign uh, the manifest of the image and ensure that it's not being tampered with, um, the contents of the image uh, are not actually in the manifest itself, but in the files that are created that form the image. So what we've done is we've introduced a plus encrypted suffix for, in, uh, for layers. And what this means is that on top of just Taji zipping uh, the collection of files, uh, we do an additional encryption step to encrypt these blocks. And we have this new media type called plus encrypted. So within the layers, now we have media type instead of layer.tar plus gzip, we have tar gzip plus encrypted. And we have several annotations over here to kind of show um, details of how the layer can be decrypted. So let's kind of take a quick look at this. Um, and we're going to use the Scorpio tool. So let's look at the image that we've created. So I'm going to remove this. And so Scorpio is a tool that um, can be used to look at details of images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, please download this image from Docker Hub. And we can see now that if we go in and look at the index, it says that um, here's the manifest. It's located at this digest. So if we dig into the image, we can go into the manifest. And if we go down all the way to layers, we can see that now the layers are being encrypted, right? So it's tied gzip plus encrypted. And over here, you can see here's the metadata that is required to decrypt the image. Now, metadata can only be used if um, access to the private key is available. So the private key is still required to decrypt this package um, so that the layer itself can be decrypted. All right. So a few interesting things about uh, the design choices that uh, we have for encrypted container images is firstly by doing encryption on the layers instead of the entire image. Uh, we still benefit the, from the flexibility of deduplication of non-sensitive layers. So if we have an image here, for example, where we have a, a small bit of code, which is a secret algorithm, we can still use the Ubuntu layers and the middleware layers to, um, to be able to use the images. And basically these will be deduplicated. So we have the middleware and the operating system. And you know, only the small blob on top would be um, the encrypted code. So another thing that we have here is that we are able to be able to encrypt for multiple recipients. So um, in this case, we showed that we have encrypted a, um, an image for Alice. But in this case, I can specify that I want to encrypt a particular image for Alice, for Brandon, for Justin, uh, or for example, in the case where you're using a third party service for uh, scanning images, we can say we're going to encrypt uh, the, the image so that it can be decrypted by a third party scanning service. So we talked about, uh, you know, what it looks like when we say Bob wants to send an encrypted to Atlas. Um, this kind of shows us the end-to-end -end flow uh, for developers wanting to share encrypted images. Uh, however, uh, what happens if we want to actually run this on the cluster? So the idea is here, Atlas says, okay, now that I have these images, uh, how do I run this on my Kubernetes cluster? 
Superflow is going to look um, almost exactly the same as um, what we saw earlier, where you know bot wants to send something to Atlas. Um, However, the only difference here is that instead of Addis pulling and decrypting the image um, with a private key, this would be Addis's Kubernetes cluster that will be doing it. So how does this work? Um, so the idea is that Addis had the decryption keys to decrypt the, uh, the image earlier when we used to build a command. Uh, now, um, in order for the Kubernetes cluster to download and decrypt these images, uh, Addis has to make the private key available to the nodes on the cluster. So the idea here is that Addis can configure the private keys on the nodes of the cluster, and the nodes will be, uh, and when the images are pulled and unpacked, the decryption will be done. So the component that does this today in Kubernetes is the runtime. So this could be either container D or cryo. Um, and the idea is that in Kubernetes, we are going to be able to define um, the location of these keys on the nodes itself. So in the case of cryo, uh, it's going to, the default directory is going to be Etsy cryo keys. And for container D, this can be set in the config.toml file. So let's take a look at um, how this works. So we are going to have a Kubernetes cluster here. So I've started a mini kube cluster. And basically, um, I set it to use the cryo runtime. And we can see here it's running a Kubernetes cluster 118 on cryo 117. And the idea here to initialize the cluster with encrypted images is to ensure that the directory that is created, so making sure that SC cryo keys is available here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try and run the image that we created earlier. So to do this, we're going to use a minikube dashboard. And we are going to run our image here. So now Alice is going to try and run this image. Um, we're going to use the app name. We're just going to say this is the anchor the app that we want to use. And we are going to say um, the container image is the one that we've created, which is docker hub.io and GGB my app. So like a regular pod, this can be deployed. And we are going to see update in a couple of seconds. And oh, look. But um, it looks like there was an issue with downloading and using the image. So if we go down into the pod status here, and we click on the error message here, we can now see the error saying that it's unable to pull the image, and more specifically, that it was not able to decrypt the image because a private key was missing. All right. So it's kind of expected, right? Because we initialized the directory, but we didn't really put in the private key required to decrypt the image. So that's what we're going to do next. So Alice is now going to take her private key. So this is what we generated earlier. And we are going to take this, and we are going to put it in the node. So we're going to put this in the node by doing minikube ssh into the node. We're going to go to the directory. And then we are going to put the file in, add it as private key. And we are going to paste in the file over here. Cool. So now we have add as private key in the node. It should be able to decrypt the image. So now we're going to go back to the Kubernetes dashboard. And we are going to retry this image by just deleting the pod and make it make the deployment create a new pod here. And it's going to wait a couple of seconds. And we can see that the pod was successfully deployed. This means that it was able to decrypt the image and run it. And what we can do to just ensure that is let's go into the pod 
to make sure that we have this image over here. And we had the secret file that we created earlier. And we can see that this was our super secret password that we put in with the CNCF webinar. All right, so now we've shown uh, how we create uh, an image and we are able to run it on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, what we saw basically was this, uh, right? Uh, we, we showed how Alice can take her private key and we can put that in the Kubernetes cluster by going to each individual node and um, putting the private key in the directory where the runtime retrieves it. However, you know, this is, this is something that um, you may not necessarily want to do in production, right? Because then the administrator has access to the private keys and so on. Um, so the next step up uh, of what you can do is to have the nodes be able to retrieve the, the keys from some sort of key management system such as Vault or the Kubernetes secrets, right? So in this case, we can uh, generate keys and administrator can generate keys within Vault or put them in the Kubernetes secret and we can ensure that through an operator be able to say that a cluster should only be able to download these keys and put them on the nodes uh, only if it is authorized to do so, All right? So this can be by ensuring that there's a proper token that the, the cluster has to be available to download these private keys. So we're currently in the works of creating an operator here um, to do this with Kubernetes secrets. So the idea is that if you put um, the key in Kubernetes secrets, it would be automatically synced um, onto every node within the cluster. And we are looking to be able to do this as well with key management systems such as Vault. So this is kind of looking at things at a single cluster um, environment. So how about when we have multiple clusters over different regions? And this really brings us into more of a compliance perspective of it. Um, so the idea here is that we have multiple clusters. We have a US cluster and an EU cluster here. And the idea is that we can generate private keys that are specific to each of them. So we have the EU cluster with a private key and we have the US cluster that has a US private key. Uh, and these um, keys can only be delivered successfully if the cluster is authorized. And what happens now is that now someone can go say that I want to encrypt an image with the EU public key. So now we have this image is encrypted and more specifically is encrypted and is tied to EU keys. So what happens here is that now this EU key can only, uh, EU image can be only decrypted on the EU cluster and not the US cluster. So in the case where it's something like export control where certain algorithms cannot be run in particular regions, uh, this can be used to basically create that binding um, of the control between the images and the environments which they run in. And so this is, can be used for geofencing by, uh, by encrypting the image for various regions and ensuring that uh, we have proper key management to ensure that uh, only the correct regions have access to this private key. Uh, and this, this kind of setup can be as complex as, as you'd like it to be. Um, you can have the keys just based on authorization uh, with a token to vault. Um, you can go as much as to ensuring that there's a hardware root of trust that is backed by this. So every cluster has a TPM. That TPM is bootstrapped in the data center with an asset tag. Um, but that in itself is kind of a talk on its own. So I won't be covering too much details, but we can talk about it in the Q&A if you'd like to. So just to give a summary, um, so we talked about container encryption. How does it work? What is it there for to pr protect the confidentiality of images uh, and to ensure that we can deprivilege the registry even if it's compromised? Uh, we've shown that with key management and proper um, authorization, we can provide geofencing execution capabilities. And we also showed kind of an end-to-end -end demo how to do this. Um, 
from a developer creating the image to running it on a Kubernetes cluster. So today uh, we have, this is being supported by ContainerD and Cryo runtimes. You can use Builder, you can use Scorpio to encrypt these images. And as we've seen, it's um, supported in Docker distribution. So um, you can upload these images to Docker Hub uh, or any um, registry that uses the Docker distribution registry. Uh, and we are looking for um, contributions here. So there are several um, tools that we still don't have the support in. Uh, and we are looking for contribution here. So build tools such as Canical or the Docker CLI and registries such as Quay. Uh, this is an area which we still don't have um, integration support with today. Uh, so with that, uh, that is all that I have for today for con encrypted container images. Um, thank you very much um, for having me here. I hope you find this interesting. Uh, if you like um, security topics like these, um, I also recommend um, dropping by the CNCF 6 security. Uh, we, we do have a community where we talk about security of um, cloud native systems. And um, if you want to get involved, Please drop by. All right, thank you. Thanks, Brandon, for a great presentation. Uh, now we've got some time for Q and A. So, drop any questions you have in the Q and A tab uh, down at the bottom of your screen. Okay. So I I just I see one question uh, by Jin Dong. Um, so can private key be, the question is in a Kubernetes scenario, can the private key be used in a Kubernetes secret? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, so currently we are writing an operator that will do this. The idea is that you would drop your key in a Kubernetes secret and there will be a daemon set that syncs up this secret with those on, on the nodes themselves. Um, we also, so that's kind of the way that we're doing it today. Uh, we also had a KEP, KEP open that talked about being able to link uh, particular encryption keys to user accounts. However, it seems like there really wasn't a, a big need for this requirement. So for now, we are still doing node level, node level keys. And then we would use the operator to sync up these keys with the, with the node. Um, question, do any cloud Kubernetes like AKS, EKS about this? Um, to my knowledge, um, no. So this was a, a feature that was fairly recently introduced. So um, the only offering that I know today that has this kind of inbuilt, and it's not even you know um, published um, or documented very well, is, is actually OpenShift. So Cryo um, 117 and above. So any Kubernetes cluster that is using Cryo 117 and above will have this. Um, there's ContainerD support today. Um, so anything that's using the new version of ContainerD, which I believe is um, 114, the 114 beta, uh, will also support this, but require configuration in the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, um, how do I, okay, so any approaches to encrypting values of Kubernetes secrets? Um, so I think that, so I answer this question in kind of um, two aspects. One of it is um, specific to encrypted container images where we say, okay, how do we, ensure that we protect the keys well. And then another aspect of it is, you know, um, secrets more in general, like you're talking about. So um, in terms of secrets, I think the, the posture at least that we are looking at um, with regards to this, especially in highly regulated industries is that, um, Today, you can use the KMS plugin to kind of encrypt the secrets as they are stored within etcd. Um, but there's still um, the issue where, you know, the cluster administrator may have access to these secrets. 
So there are other mechanisms that you know we're looking at in which we can ensure the delivery of the secrets where it's not necessarily tied to um, you know so to ensure that the operator will not be able to access these secrets. Um, the way we're approaching it with keys is that we kind of almost want to do this out of band of the Kubernetes operator. The idea is that um, we want to go up to the node level and say that, okay, I want to be able to attest the node to say that this is in a particular data center. And the key management system should be then able to deliver the key to the node and to say that, okay, you are from an EU cluster, you're from a US cluster, this is the key that's, um, that you should have access to. Um, so I'd say just in terms of today for Kubernetes secrets, I think KMS plugins are a good way to go. Um, but then if the concern of you know an operator potentially having access to a secret or the breach of the master is something that's um, in your threat model, then um, there can be other ways in which you can um, obtain the secrets, you know, to vault out of band outside the Kubernetes cluster. Um, so can I estimate when encrypted containers could be supported with Docker runtime? So um, the quick answer is that it should be soon because um, the Docker runtime uses container D and container D does have support for it. Um, but I have not um, seen what the latest of this is, um, but I believe it should be soon just because container D is, you know, what's running under underlying the Docker runtime. Um, so the in terms of standardization, we've been working on OCI. So um, I Maybe I can post a couple links in the chat later. Um, but we are working on OCI standardization and this interaction today is with the runtimes. There's also a KEP that we have on that I talked about earlier where we're talking about um, service account specific um, keys. Uh, but it seems like, um, I will also link that KEP in the chat as well. Um, there is some work that's being discussed here, but it seems like as of now, you can you still use it without really involving Kubernetes as all, at all, uh, just by ensuring that the runtimes have access to the keys. Um, and from John, are you looking to connect this to GitOps model and our Vietnam ECO secrets? Um, yes, this is something that we definitely want to do. Um, we have it, we've actually shown um, doing this in a uh, pipeline. So we've done this in Tecton and stuff like that. And we, we really um, we really like the idea of that and we're trying to push for that. Um, you know, we've done this in Builder. I know a good majority of users also use Canico in those pipelines. So that's why we're also looking for, you know, contributors in this case to, to help add to more of the GitOps type two chain. Um, so that we can get this in. Um, uh, Bitnami sealed secrets. Yeah, so so we we do uh, we are looking at something similar to that. Um, uh, we have kind of a solution that we call trusted service identity, which links directly to Vault. Um, but the the concept is the same. And so so yeah, I am in full agreement that you know that is a model that we want to go for. We want to make um, basically every container that's being created be encrypted so that, you know, we don't have to trust the registry as much or, you know, if the registry is compromised, um, we are fine with that. Okay, I think that, was that all the questions? Okay, great. Well, thanks, Brandon, for a great presentation. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. The webinar recording and slides will be up later today, and we look forward to seeing everybody at another CNCF webinar. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, thank you. I'll try and post the slides as well um, somewhere. And
Um, let me get this out pending on that to make it available. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Bye.